My name is Jessica, and uh, I'm a little nervous. My hands are shaking. There's a lot of class. <laughs> but yes, my name is Jessica, and I have the privilege to serve God here in Auckland. To tell you a little bit about myself, I am Mexican American. <laughs> my parents moved from Mexico in the 80s, and we lived in East LA before moving to a very conservative Orange County, California. I grew up in a very religious Catholic home, and we would involve God in every aspect of our lives. We would pray together every night as a family, go to catechism classes on Wednesday nights, and church on Sundays. To me, God was like a spiritual father who loved me, protected me, and answered all of my prayers whenever I would uh, give him a request. As this was the standard with my family, God was the one that brought my family together. Although on the outside we looked like we were living the American dream. We had a house, uh, my dad had enough money to support a wife and four children, kids were receiving high marks in their classes, and God was the center of it. But unfortunately, darkness doesn't wait. When I was nine years old, I was sexually molested by my father and by other male family members as well. I never told anyone because of fear, disgust, embarrassment. I was very scared that if I exposed the truth and what had happened to me, no one would believe me and that it would tear what I loved the most. That was my family. Even though it was very unfortunate that you know, that these things do happen. I never faced the truth, but I hid in darkness and in shame. And I got angry, bitter, resentful, and blamed God for the ugliness of the world. If God was such a good God, why did he allow good things to happen? Bad things to happen. I began to have this rage whenever I wasn't in control of any situation or of people. I overindulged in myself, how I dressed, how I look, and why he meant to look at me. My lust was a demon. I began to masturbate at a young age and started playing with dolls in a very inappropriate way. My bitterness raged against my father, against any authority figure, and no one could tell me what to do or I would do the complete opposite. I fought always to fought to be first, to answer to everything, always had an, always had an answer to everything, and I was never wrong. And I became increasingly disobedient to my parents and didn't want to forget others. As I got older, I grew more and more into my rebellion and made the decision to not to believe in God. Throughout college, I fought to maintain that belief and I waited for four hours at Caltech to see Stephen Hawking. Give a brief history of his life and hope that he would bring up God that he was non-existent. While being in the midst of the stage of his life, I knew something was wrong, very, very wrong in my heart. I tried looking for answers in counseling, I started taking Xanax, started doing yoga and meditation, focused on buying a car, believing that if I had this, it would fill up the emptiness in my heart. I was extremely unhappy. And then my sisters began to study the Bible. And I saw how happy they were as well. They had peace in their hearts, friends that genuinely cared about them. And in my pride, I didn't want to admit I was weak. I got in a car accident driving home from Vegas, and my car was wrecked, and I left without a scratch. That night I prayed for the first time and begged God to find a way out because I was tired of living like this, and I felt I was running in circles and aiming at nothing. I desperately needed answers. And the opportunity came to study the Bible, and I was ready. The girls studied the Bible with me, and they confronted a lot of the false doctrine that I grew up believing in but they encouraged me to change, they encouraged me to follow the truth. And I was ready to leave the darkness, but the issue was that I wanted to walk away in my truth and not in God's truth. In Matthew 6, 14 it says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. I know, although I knew that what the Bible said was true, I didn't want to live by it. And I personally did not like the scripture, because that would mean I would have to forgive the men that sexually molested me, and I admit that my father is a pedophile. So I went into the water without telling anyone, anyone my secret, without telling anyone the truth or the condition of my heart. Since I didn't forgive, I wasn't forgiven, and that made my baptism invalid. And I began to live another double life, knowing the good I ought to do but not doing it. And I looked like a Christian on the outside, I 
go to the Bible, say the Bible with women, and went to church every Sunday. But if anyone were to, would have examined my heart, in reality, I was very far away from God. Eventually, I got open about how I was feeling, how my heart wasn't changing, and I began to struggle with faith, and I began to question my purpose in life. The reality is that if our hearts never change, then we're still living in slavery. And that if we don't come out of that place, we will never truly experience what God has in store for us. And I made the decision to get rebaptized. What helped me to live in the light was being tired of living in the dark. And I got, and I got open about everything that had happened. The woman that mentored me not only listened, but loved me enough to tell me the truth. I was challenged to live like Jesus. I was challenged to live like Jesus at the cross. Jesus forgave Judas, the men that tortured him, and his best friends that loved him. He did this without ever getting an apology. This time rather than pointing the finger at individuals and circumstances, I asked myself, what have I been doing that doesn't fulfill what the Bible says? God helped me confront my father and ask for forgiveness and let him know that I had been forgiven, that I had forgiven without expecting anything back. And on the 11th of October, I became a true disciple. And since then, God has been amazing. God has been doing immeasurably more than I can ever imagine. <laughs> I'm so grateful. Like, it not only brought my family to church, my mom this year decided to become a Christian as well. Yes, we can help. That's a victory! Yes! <laughs> That's really, really awesome. Like, God did immeasurably more than I could ever imagine. He, I was able to move to Australia, and that was amazing. That was a challenge in, it, in itself, but I was so grateful because it not only brought me closer together with God, but also gave the opportunity for my family, my mom, to become a real disciple, that she no longer has to live in the dark anymore. So that's really, really encouraging in itself. Like I'm willing to do that sacrifice all over again for my family. Yes, for anybody that's studying the Bible or anything, Yes, like, I'm willing to do that sacrifice all over again. And living in the truth, that means that our relationship with God is based on what the Bible, on what the Bible says rather than the external validation of what people say. When I began living in the truth, I stopped fighting to always be right. I stopped making people big, and I started making God bigger. I had confidence that I had lived radiantly with nothing to hide. And I live unashamedly, like... I have never felt so free in my life. Like, I no longer have to carry that baggage in that I've been feeling. I don't have to worry about the darkness that I, that I felt like I was trapped in. Like, I'm literally free. And that's so awesome. I'm so grateful. Come on, Jen. Now I know that there's nothing that's going to hold me back from living life to the full and living to God's potential that I have always wanted to live. Thank you.